Attempt a note on Matthew Arnold's opinion about the Greek masters. Marks 10 Answer Matthew Arnold, 1822-1888, who has established himself as a great Victorian critic through his preface to poems, 1853, discusses various aspects of poetry with shrewd judgment. One such topic of discussion is the Greek masters of the past, whom Arnold eulogizes as perfect models for the contemporary writers. Arnold says the Greek masters of art collected their best knowledge and tested it prior to any creation of art because they were aware of the responsibility of that task. They also looked back to their great predecessors for inspiration and subject matter. They could fathom all the great artists and consumed all the ancient texts before producing any work. Arnold explains to his readers what intrinsic nature makes the ancient Greek scholars rule over generations with unending grace and sublimity. They did not publish their sentiments or declare their mission through their work. They knew that it would be a mere delirium of vanity. So, instead of singing hymns of their age, they stuck to giving a lively art of high morals, and people could get the highest degree of happiness from such works. Unlike the modern writers who write only on their present-day issues, the ancient writers had nothing to do with their age. The ideas which they would like to develop for presenting a high action was beyond their age. Therefore, their art has been honored for ages. They knew that the elements they need for the exercise of their art are great actions, calculated powerfully and delightfully to affect what is permanent in the human soul. That so far as the present age can supply such actions, they will gladly make use of them. But that an age wanting in moral grandeur can with difficulty supply such, and an age of spiritual discomfort with difficulty be powerfully and delightfully affected by them. Then Arnold describes the quality which they searched for in an action. He says that the time that is running can never supply with actions that speak of noble themes or high morals. Towards the end, Arnold adds that the many pleaders of the modern age will criticize this sort of judgment. Such defenders will raise their angry voices to say that the present is the greatest, having both moral grandeur and spiritual health. They consider that the ancient is bygone and always inferior. Arnold passes another dictum of the classical theory of art which follows strict discipline. He addresses all the modern critics and poets who relish contemporary art, saying how persons who possess adequate discipline will keep quiet on the issues raised against the present age by him. Arnold cites the famous German writer Goethe because of his high claims on the present age. Goethe is a good example since he gives better judgment of the present age and his percepts regarding modern art may be followed. Niebuhr, the German historian, is acquainted with the widest cultures of this world and his estimate of the modern age is of value. Arnold finds both of them worthy of attention about their suggestions or evaluation of modern art. Anand does not feel endangered by their thoughts nor does he mean to follow their ideas. A true artist, as he is, does not even keep malice or bad impressions about them or the false pretensions of his age. He would only not pay heed to them as an artist and it would be his conscious effort not to be a part of their contact, enmity, and impatience. Here, Arnold gives examples of people who pretend that they enjoy ancient masters and possess their kind of discipline. Finished Please share this channel to help any student pursue a degree in English literature. Please do not forget to like, share, and comment.